What is up, everybody? Keith Jameson, go by Gate Guy 231 across the deepest industry. Hope everybody is well. We're finally kicking off a series that I've been thinking about for about a year and a half. I've started it multiple times, decided that I wanted more production value or more of a plan. And here we are, we're starting in the middle of a car ride. And <laughs> so many of these are going to be like this, but it's DFS Soccer Basics. The strategies that I've used to be a pretty successful DFS soccer player. Um, a lot of y'all know me from uh, videos on the channel, previewing you know EPL, UCL, uh, you know back to Bundesliga, pretty much any league, um, and also on the Media Media Network, the handling EPL for Pat and his team. Um, so let's just kind of just get down to it. These are going to be broken up. I think some. I'm trying to get, trying to stay like shorter on each one and then kind of just go by topic, but we'll see. If you've watched my videos, you know I can ramble. Specifically when it's about a guy like John Moutinho, I can just ramble. But this is just basics, get you uh, familiar with terminology. If you are an experienced DFS soccer player, this is an episode that you can probably fast forward through or not even watch. But I'm gonna go with three principles in terms of players and games that I think is vital to even just starting your lineup. It's the first things that I look at when I get a slate or we get a new slate, how I'm gonna build. First and foremost are the odds. And realistically, if you have played DFS of any sport, it is probably one of the first things you look at. In basketball, we look at game tools so we can get speed or figure out if a game is supposed to blow out. In NFL, same type of deal, college football, baseball, hockey, we're looking at totals, we're looking at games, we want to get a feeling for what this game could be like, and there's no better place to do it. Whether you agree with them or not is inconsequential, it doesn't matter, but we need to get an idea from the odds makers who get paid to do these things of what the game should be like. Now in soccer, I think that it's a little bit different because you can get some crazy odds, right? You can get a minus 900 favorite, but that doesn't mean that the game is going to be 8 nothing. What a minus like 900 or minus 1,000 or even something like a minus 500 favorite is telling you is this. The game is likely to be dominated by this one team, right? We're talking 60% plus possession could be by this one team. A lot like a Man City or Bayern Munich or, you know, a Liverpool, PSG. These teams that, you know, are so much better than their opponent. And they get these big numbers. So we immediately know two things when we see that. One, we want some players from this team. We definitely want the set taker. That'll be number two. And maybe we want some more players. We want to consider their goalie. But it also means that as a plus 2,000 favorite or a plus 2,000 dog the other way, we are not all that concerned about that team. Maybe we're looking for value, but if they have a 9,000, their best player is a $9,000 forward that you know has scored a lot of goals, this is not going to be the spot for him. So that is kind of what odds dictate us. So no odds, n- n- number one. Secondly, no the set piece takers. First off, if you're really new, what is a set piece? Set piece is the ball is dead. We're not in open play. We're not dribbling back and forth, passing. We are a dead ball, whether it's a free kick or a corner kick. And likely, if it's in the attacking third, that's going to be a ball that the set piece taker is going to cross into the box on DraftKings that currently scores us 0.7 DK. And if it results in a shot, which, you know, a higher likelihood of goal scoring occurs during a set piece than in any other buildup, okay? So we're getting extra odds in terms of a shot. So that's an extra point. So now we have a 1.7 DK event from the set piece taker crossing the ball into the box. And now if that that same shot results in a goal, well, now that is 7.7 DK for the guy that delivered the ball into the box. And then 10 points for the goal for the goal scorer and two points for the shot and goal, so 12 points. So if you got the two of those together, and we'll talk about that in later episodes of GPP and correlation, but if I correlated those two players, if I did the set piece taker and the guy that scored the goal, well, now that single event got me 19.7 DK. Some of these cash lines that you'll see in EPL are 50, 60, 70 points to make it into the cash line. And you just had one event, one moment in a 90 minute plus game 
that gave you 19.7 DK. That's why getting the set piece taker and potentially correlating to the uh, the goal scorer is such a big deal. So that is set piece takers. And the final big avenue that I think that any successful DFS player to soccer or DFS soccer player needs to implement is some form of getting the lineups and the formations. Okay. So common apps are sofa score, the score. Uh, I know a lot of people use, I think it's called foot mob, rotowire. If you are a member at rotowire, that is a great source for information. They have a new lineup tool for FSI members. I do sofa score and I detail diagram. I show you who's on the set pieces. I show you on showdowns who is a better cash play, who doesn't have a floor. But knowing the formations are so critical. And within the formations, there's I don't want to go too deep into it. That will be a video all by itself. But we are most interested in attacking players and wide players. So on a formation, and maybe I'll drop a diagram here. We'll, we'll see how good my video editing is. But I'm planning to do a diagram here. Hopefully it will show up. But if you look at this, the outside guys, so the fullbacks, are the, um, the widest two in a... Uh, at the defender position. So there's a couple of formations. A 4-4-2 means it has two fullbacks, two center backs. The fullbacks who are interested for DFS because they can get forward and they can cross. If it's a back three, we're not interested really in any of those three guys for a cash game, maybe for a punt, but for a cash game, normally not. And we're looking for the two wing backs in that situation, whether it's what's called a 3-4-3 or a 3-5-2, those outer wide guys have a chance to cross. And then we're also, um, very interested in attackers, especially the wingers. The wingers get out on the wings. They, a lot of times in attacking buildups, will get the ball, will cross it, will center it back, have better chance to dribble and get fouls drawn, all of which are DraftKings scoring events. Guys that are in the center of the pitch, so center backs and central midfielders, unless they have, they're a set piece taker, what we just talked about a little bit ago, unless they are a set piece taker, their floor, so their floor points, the amount of points we can get from them without scoring a goal or doing an assist, drastically is reduced. So that's why we are so interested in guys that can score DraftKings points without a goal or assist. Look, it's super hard, super difficult to predict the goals. You have a team of 10 outfield players, right? 10 outfield players and a goalie. So, and there's going to be one to two goals in most games, right, per team. One to two. Zero to two is most likely outcomes. And then you obviously get outliers and more. But with all that being said, now you got to pick the one to two guys that's going to score the goals. Now we can predict them more often than not. It's going to be an attacker. But it could come from anywhere. So we want to give ourselves the best chance to cash and to score DraftKings points with or without goals. That's the goal in cash game. Get points without goals. Wide players are going to do it. All right. That's going to do it for this video. I hope that this helps. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to keep posting more throughout the week. Please drop in comments here. First off, if it helps. And then secondly, what other topics you would love to be discussed. I have a plan of about 10 videos that I'm going to do different things like correlations, um, uh, cash game strategies versus GPP strategies. Uh, you know, how different formations can affect the player's effectiveness, things like that. But if you have any topics you want me to discuss too, please drop them in here. I'd love to hear it. Thank you all so much for watching. Once again, this is Keith Jamison. I'll go by GearGuy231, Prosecutor of Industry. See you!